for our other ceramic tools, they live in these last two cubbies, every or three. Um, every table has a white bin with their table on it and they have a red bin. The red bin is the items we use to pack up our completed projects and take home. The white bin are the tools that we sometimes use for what we are creating. So if I say get the white bucket, you find the one that has your name, take it to your table. Now, there are not enough rolling pins for each table. There's only a certain amount, so please use them correctly or I will take them from your table. Um, the squirt bottle, that is vinegar. That is kind of like our glue when we are putting things, putting two pieces of clay together, that is how we use it. We use it as glue. Be careful, it does drip out very easily. And then the spray bottle is water. So as you learn, as you work with clay, you'll notice the clay, um, your hands make the clay dry as you keep working with it. You will spray your hands with the water, not the clay. You don't wanna make mud. And if you spray the clay, it makes mud. If you spray your hands, it keeps them um, from getting the clay dried out. Again, if you misuse any of these tools, you will get them taken away. And it's really hard, obviously, if you need the glue or if you're drying out the clay or you need to roll it out, not to have these items to use. So please make sure that you're always using them properly. Again, when we clean up, once you're all done, you take your white bucket or your red bucket and you find a cubby hole to stick it in. So please make sure you understand that's other ceramic tools that we use. Okay, we are gonna be working on a ceramic luminaire. If you don't know what a luminaire is, it's where you stick um, a some kind of candle or light in there and the holes shine through. Now this was the first one I made and please understand this is way too thin. If you're looking at the edge right here, you can see it is thinner. It is about the thickness of my skewer, which is way too thin. And you can see it's kind of droopy. So we wanna make sure it's better than Miss Lawson's first attempt. So move this off to the side. Now you're gonna have your tray. Your tray is going to have um, your piece of clay wrapped up in plastic. Please do not throw this plastic away. We have to use it um, when we're using to wrap around this. Then you're gonna have a plastic little piece because it's protecting from the, um, the texture of the tray. Then you're gonna have your template, a skewer, a toothbrush, and possibly one of these tools. You may not have all, both tools, but you should have these two. There should be enough. So what you're gonna do is once you get that, and then you'll get your um, container with your, well, all we need for the rolling pins, the vinegar, and the wash, the spray. So the first thing you have to do is unwrap it. Once you unwrap it, again, do not throw or ball up this plastic. You're gonna take the plastic, take it to your cup, and wrap it around your cup. So, once you do that, move off that to the side. So, this is way too thick for you to start with, and it's not long enough. You have to get it as long as your template. Um, this is where the rolling pin comes in handy. So, you're gonna keep this right here because you're gonna use it as a guide. So, the first thing I do if I'm waiting for the um, rolling pin is I throw it out. You take your whole clay on your palm and you just flip it onto your mat. Then you pick it up, flip it. So you're doing this and notice my hand is not, like I'm not slamming it. I'm just slim, simply flipping it over and it's gonna start to um, get longer and longer. So I'm gonna do this quickly. Okay, so it's gotten a little bit more thinned out. So now it's probably gonna be easier for me to use the rolling pin. You have to stand up for this. You need to use your muscles and push down on this. Sitting in the stool is not gonna get it done. Again, my goal is to get it as long as this. So I don't wanna use the rolling pin this way. It's already wide enough. I wanna use the rolling pin this way. So that means I'm gonna take this and turn it this way, get my rolling pin, start in the middle and you're gonna push up, go back to the middle, push down. If you're just going back and forth, you're gonna have a spot that's too thin. So again, you start in the middle, push down, you're pushing up, go back to the middle, push down. Stop, flip it. The reason we stop and flip, as you notice, it's wet. It will get stuck to this plastic thing. 
So I'm just doing the same thing. Middle, down, middle, up, flip. Middle, up, middle, down, and flip. Again, if you don't flip it and you just keep rolling it, it's going to stick and mess up your clay. You check it, it's almost there. Stop and flip, middle, up, middle, check. Oh, see, perfect. Okay, so put that back in the thing or pass it to the next person. Now, I did want to pick it up, make sure it's not stuck. This is going to be stuck here. I want to kind of stick it into the clay so it won't move. Okay, the skewer is the best thing. The skewer has a pointed and a flat edge. Use the pointed edge and you're going to cut this shape. So I'm following the line of the paper, pushing through the clay, trying to be as accurate as possible. Move this off to the side. Do the same thing for the top and bottom. I'm gonna cut this way now, you can see it. Move that off to the side. Again, you gotta use your muscles. Okay, so I have cut off my extra. Then I can peel my paper off and you can see I have the shape of the paper. Now I'm just taking my finger and gently kind of rubbing it over the edges just to get those little pieces off. Again, pick it up. Now, at any point, if your um, clay gets stuck to the mat, pick the mat up, use it like a sticker back. Then you can peel it off like this so you don't have to redo it. Okay, so I'm just going to flip over. You can see it's smooth. Now, this extra clay needs to go in a Ziploc baggie. So I'm going to smush it all together into a ball. Make sure I get all the little pieces. And then I'm going to show you there are some Ziploc baggies over on one of my rolling carts. You'll put this in the baggie, zip it up, and put it back in my tub. For now, it's just going to hang out there. Okay, so the next step before you make it into the circle part is you're going to use your skewer again. Again, use the pointed tip and you're going to draw different shapes out of the clay. I did circles and ovals. That's up to you. You don't want to go to the edge. So I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to move in a little bit and gently draw a line. That's telling me to stop. Move my finger in a little bit and gently draw a line. You are only drawing the shapes within there. So if you need me to check how close you are, just make sure we don't draw too close to those edges, only in the middle. So again, you can do different shapes. And you wanna go all the way through them too many. I'd rather you do bigger shapes than a bunch of tiny shapes. Doing it easy right now, just cause I'm trying to show it to y'all, okay. I'm gonna leave it three on the top, two on the bottom. Yes, I see these little bits. This is gonna be the inside, so I'm not worried about the little bits. I'm just kind of pushing them off to the edge with my finger. Just the thickness of this compared to this. No, yes, no, yes. So make sure you are not doing the no, you are doing the yes. So now we're gonna be um, doing something called um, scratch and attach. So it has to create texture where we're going to put the two pieces together because those two textures kind of form a grip on each other. You can't just lay them on top um, with the glue. So the scratching, you can do it two ways. You can use your toothbrush, your skewer, any of your tools. Um, it's going to be on the one part here and then you're going to flip it over and do it the other part there because they have to touch. So I'm going to do the first part, and again, you can use the toothbrush and just poke. Again, we're on this line. Um, and then I'm going to take this, roll it over, and do the opposite side. So again, this is the outside, that is the inside. You have to do the texture with both sides. Now. That I've done that, I'm going to take my cup that's wrapped in plastic, uh, not on this side, I'm going to start on the other side, lay it down, I'm going to roll up around my cup, 
Okay, so once I've rolled it around my cup, you're gonna see that the two flaps where the texture is here and here are going to overlap each other. Again, I don't feel like I've got enough texture. I'm gonna do some lines, like a tic-tac-toe board. Okay, so I got it rolled up. Now, again, we can't just stick them together. That's when this drip container comes in. This is vinegar. This is like the glue. You got to be very careful. It drips a lot and it drips fast. Once I've dripped some on one end, then I can bring them together. Again, this is not done. Do not leave it like this. We've got to take the top and smush it into the bottom. Again, another tool. You could just use your finger. I'm pressing down on the outside, pressing it in or onto the other piece. Do you see it's cracking right here? It's getting dry. So that's why I'm gonna take the water on my hand, squirt some water on my hand, rub my hands together, and then I can touch it more and smooth it out and it's not gonna dry it out. Again, see how much it's already gotten liquidy? That's why you only need to squirt a little bit on your hands. But that's just because I've been touching it a lot. It's getting dry. And if you don't do that, it's going to crack. So you don't wanna, so I'm just taking my finger and smoothing it out. And again, you can see it's pretty thin right here. You don't want to go too close to the top or it'll crack or too close to the bottom. Catch the outside. It's on my cup. My plastic is protecting the cup. So again, there's one more step because you can't put this on the tray. I don't know whose it is. So in this area where I have a lot of space, I'm going to take my skewer, my sharp end, and I'm going to write my name so Miss Lawson can read it. I'm writing Lawson just because it's easier. If your name, again, make sure it's, I can read it. If I can't read it, someone else is gonna take it and then you may not get your piece back. So make sure I can read it before you put it on your tray. So once you have it all done, make sure these tools are on there. I got my extra clay. I'm putting these back in the white buckets. I've got my template sitting here. So we're going to walk this back to the area that it needs to go. And I'm going to show you where to put the things. So I'm going to carefully carry my tray back over to our clay station. So I'll have this table. You can lay your tray down. Okay. When you bring your tray to this table, you have all the three rolling carts right here that you'll drop your stuff off. So the first one is getting a Ziploc baggie. Grab your Ziploc. You're going to unzip it and stick this extra clay right in the baggie. When you close it, you get all the air out of it. Squeeze it so there's no air. Make sure it's completely closed. Then it's gonna go back in the tub right there. Once you've put the extra clay, then you're going to take your finished piece, carefully walk it over to your so we're just gonna stick them on the top. So that's why it's important to have your name. Then once you do that, you're going to grab your tray, make sure all your tools are there and your template. And that's where it's gonna go back on one of these slots. This is where our tray ceramic tools stay. This is where um, you will put them when you are done. Every tray goes on a metal shelf. So don't just slam them in here. Um, you can see there is little metal bars. They go between the metal bars. The only thing that should be left on each tray is the tray, the plastic mat that are different colors, and your tools. Um, all other things need to go in the other places or in the trash can. So make sure that you put your extra clay in a baggie. Make sure that you put your luminaire on the top with your name. That's important. Make sure that you put your tray back and then you can go wash your hands in the sink. This is our kiln. It is like a big, very, very, very hot oven. And there are different shelves that I put in there to hold our items as they cook. You are not allowed in this room. So please make sure that you do not go in unless Miss Lawson tells you just in case our kiln is on. And these are the different shelves. I take them out and put them in as I load and unload. And these are the feet 
also called stilts, that make sure the different shelves are not touching each other. So again, this is the kiln. And it gets very, very, very hot.